What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final, final little pass is a business. Dead Meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, your horror safe haven. I'm Chelsea. I'm James. And that's Lucy, who is sitting on the cat tower that we got for her to sit in here with us on. That was a lot of prepositions. Yeah. Um, but Months this ago. is really, she's here now. This is really exciting. Yeah, and we're a family, and we like to get scared together. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, here it is. Here's your Halloween Ends podcast. Here it is. We did Halloween 2018. We did Halloween Kills. We're finishing out the trilogy. We have to do Halloween Ends, and I, I just felt, I kind of hate that we did the first two because then we had to do this one. We had to finish it I'm out. Just... We we did not want to watch this movie for this podcast. That is my very first note in my notes. Is it's not? A, I don't want to watch this. It's not a great sign that I was dreading rewatching. This. We saw it. We saw the premiere. We did go to the, at the premiere. Chinese theater. Got to to see it with. Uh, David Gordon Green and and the producers and and Jamie Lee Curtis oh gosh, standing up there and sparkly red dress yeah looking like the Moulin Rouge up there really cool it was sat next <laughs> to Spencer and Nadia it was a good time it was yeah. a damn good time um we watched the movie and we got out of it and we were we didn't know what to think I remember there were two times I leaned over and whispered to you one was. Is Michael even in this movie mm-hmm. about half hour in? And yeah. two, <laughs> I think it was towards the very end. I leaned over and just said, dude, people are going to fucking hate this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> and, and they did. And they did. Fans did. Uh, it has a higher Rotten Tomato score than Halloween Kills. That's interesting to me. Um, and when I went, I, I did a quick Halloween end search on Twitter and... I mean, granted, it might just be people who are fans who are still talking about it. I don't think people who disliked it are still going to be going on about it. But a lot of people liked it. That's the thing. If you like this movie, don't feel unseen. The people, Some people like this movie. I think the people who didn't uh, very much did not like it and were very vocal about it. Yeah. Um, and I think I saw a lot of posts about Halloween Kills looking better in retrospect after this movie we were fine with halloween kills with this like i still don't know how to feel i don't either about and halloween i genuinely ends. mean that i'm not just saying that because i'm like oh no i actually think it's bad but like we like we david know gordon some green people involved and yeah, yeah like david gordon green is like he's a, a cool guy really cool Re- guy regardless of whatever movie he makes he's a cool guy we really like him uh we, lo- we love all the people who were involved in this. Christopher Nelson, the makeup artist. Yeah. James Jude Courtney. Like, awesome people. Cameo from Darcy. Great. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know. My brain is just question marks. This is the least certain I have felt about anything we reviewed on this podcast, maybe. I don't know. I can't think of many other movies we've reviewed where I'm going in just like, I don't really know how I feel. And maybe once we talk through it. I, I have plenty of issues with it. And I, you know... I hate putting a number on how I feel about a movie, but if I had to here, I would be like, I don't know, like 40%. Like, like it's a little negative. I Uh, lean towards dislike only because I just wasn't, I didn't enjoy rewatching it. I will not to say a movie has to be rewatchable though. I don't think that's a requirement for a good movie. I think that I dreaded rewatching it more than I hated rewatching it. Like I, yeah, I didn't okay. want to rewatch it, and then once it it was on, I was like, "That's right." Like he knows how to make a good movie. It's competently shot, you know. Like it, it, it's. I don't hate being here, but I hated getting in the car to drive there. If that makes sense. Yeah. You know, just knowing like this is the next two hours of our night. Yeah. Is rewatching this. Mm-hmm. And and because here's the thing, it's like we said, Michael Myers not in it that much and instead it focuses on an entirely new character Corey. Corey. One right off the bat, dude, introduce Corey in Halloween Kills. I agree. Please? Yeah. And it makes it better. Or and give that- this whole thing to Allison, this whole like cuz th- there's obviously a theme to this movie of uh blame and um communal 
guilt or communal fear. And, and yeah, and 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 uh, uh, guilt and blame bringing out the evil in someone, mm-hmm. like like becoming the monster that people think you are. Yeah, or or something bad happens to either a person or people, and you need something to take it out on. You need someone to blame. And yeah. is Michael even a fucking real person? We don't even know at this <laughs> point because he seemingly is magical. So it really here's this kid we it, can kind of all take this out on. And there is something interesting to that idea. Yeah. And I think that that's a cool thing worth exploring. Uh, I love Andy Matichak. Yeah, really Matichak? love her. Ma- it is Matichak. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, I thought it was Matichak before we interviewed her. And then Corey is uh, Rohan. Rohan Campbell. And like those two give such a good performance. They're very good in this. Yeah. Everyone's really good in this. Yeah. It just feels, and and that's the thing too is I I heard <laughs> from people who got to see an earlier cut of this. Oh yeah. That this movie's gone through a few different iterations and, and endings lots and such. of changes i maybe some i don't know if there are reshoots but all i know is that darcy's kill scene got cut yeah and she we seemed were, upset about that we were really sad for her i felt real bad if i got cast in a halloween movie and then filmed an elaborate scene where michael myers murdered me it uh, sounded like being pinned against the wall mm-hmm. one of those kills and then it just got cut and you were killed yeah. off screen i'd be real bummed dude like go see it for yourself i know that you'll you've probably heard that this movie fucking sucks like that's the thing a lot of people have a burning hatred for this movie, and I definitely don't. I don't either. I, If anything, even if I lean towards I don't really like it, I like that it's doing something different. It and tried. It's, it's bizarre and not at all what I was expecting. And you can just, like, Michael is such an easy character to just, fine, we'll just fucking make it a really straight-up slasher. You know, one big final showdown with Lori. Just hitting all those beats that are, I think pretty cut and dry expected yeah like it took a shot uh yeah. i the, the other issue is that you know 2018 came out love that fucking movie i think it's the best halloween next to the original and, and then halloween three and halloween three that's true <laughs> uh and then they immediately announce two sequels which mm-hmm. one hamstrings kills because it's the middle part of a trilogy so only so many things can happen but two you it sets up an expectation that this trilogy is going to be cohesive and it's not like, this is not a good final chapter to this trilogy. It feels very disconnected. Like kills in 2018 for all of kills faults felt tight. Well, yeah. I mean, it it helps that both those movies are like, they start and end with the same thing. Cause the end of, just Halloween is them in the truck. Yeah. It and takes place on the same night, the those same, two movies. Yeah. And this movie takes place four years, years later. later. So obviously there will be a disconnect. But it still feels like I don't like that disjoint. Like like with 2018 and Kills feeling so tight and you have all these crossover characters and you're like, oh yeah, we're really in Haddonfield and it feels like it and we know these these background characters. Ends just comes in and kind of wipes the slate clean and is like, well now... Uh, Allison's was dating a, a older cop for dating a while, the, and like ambiguously aged cop named Doug. And and uh, <laughs> Lori has a Halloween tradition of baking pumpkin pies. <laughs> yeah, her Halloween tradition. It's tradition of like two years. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I don't know, man. So I'm disappointed in it as a end to a trilogy. I guess I do the, the pump. I can't believe I'm gonna get hung up on the pumpkin pie thing, but I guess I do <laughs> like the idea that. This character maybe realizes how much she's missed out on because she lived so much of her life being essentially a hermit and Mm -hmm. missed out on so much family time, especially after her daughter dying. Just maybe she's really trying to force the idea that it's like, I have this Halloween tradition now. Damn it. I'm going to do this every year Yeah, because things are normal now and we're family. At least she's in it a little bit more than kills, but which still... is wild because it does not feel like she's in this. No, for but very in much. kills, she's just fucking laying in a hospital bed the whole time. Yeah. Oh man, it's it's just I'm I'm let down because 2018 I love so much. I I really like 2018 a lot too. I think they I I have no idea if this is true, but they weren't expecting there to be sequels when they made 2018, right? I'm sure they had the idea of. There could be see because it's fucking Halloween. It's Halloween, right? But I don't think they had a plot or story sketched out. I would assume. I don't know, 
But my guess, judging by how this said, or maybe they did, and this was what they wanted to do. I don't know, man. <laughs> Should we just fucking <laughs> yeah. start on mm-hmm. Halloween season of the Cory? Oh, Cory. Cory. Cory, Cory, Cory. What just are we going to do with you, Cory? When you, like, you had to have some idea that you were going to do this and end, so or, introduce him and kill Or what they could do is have it so that Andy meets Allison? him. Yeah, Allison. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Two A names. Allison meets him before the time jump forward. Yeah. So that maybe they've been dating a little bit or, you know, even just like they know each other and are friendly and then they start dating. Their he just, romance their is romance so just is fucking so abrupt. Fast and, and I get it. They are both kind of like outsiders in this community for different reasons. As they say in their dialogue, she is like the survivor of this crazy attack. He is... Uh, considered a child killer. Yes, can we? Okay, yeah, I guess let's, let's start ex- with let's the explain, fucking intro. Let's explain how that happens, because honestly, I love this intro. This cold open rules. This cold open is great. Uh, Before, like... Great crowd reaction to what happens in this. Um, It's just, it's fun. It's like, this would work so well, I think, if Corey wasn't the main fucking character of the movie. If he was just in this cold open, and mm-hmm. it was kind of like... A, a statement. That, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But like. But then, what's the point of it if Corey's not in the rest yeah, of it? Yeah, I guess. It's just I, this this mini movie of this. It'd be great. World's unluckiest babysitter. Yeah. So the cold open takes place only one year after kills in 2019, and so Michael's been uh he's disappeared. He hasn't been seen in a year, and people are still like not sure where he is. Yeah. And Corey Cunningham, who's a 21 year old, who's uh I think in college. He comes to babysit a little shipbird named Jeremy. Yeah, I like uh, that. Corey Cunningham, his last name, obviously an allusion to Artie. Is it Art? Yeah, it's Artie, right? Cunningham. Oh, in, and uh, Christine? In Christine. Ooh, that's right. This movie is Christine. This movie is heavily inspired by Christine. Where? Which, yes, you're not wrong. That's the Killer Car movie. Yeah. Uh, and if you're does, wondering how does this inspire Halloween, we will try to explain that. Imagine Michael Myers as a car. Yes. And there you go. Although I think Michael is a bit less protective of Corey because Christine gets jealous. That's the true. Thing. Michael doesn't give a fuck. Michael's yeah. just like, yeah, I'm kind of old. I need, might need some help, you know? Oh, man. Extra pair of hands around the old sewer lair <laughs> to help God. me out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Michael lives in a sewer. He does. Uh, so This is the second time it's happened. <laughs> oh, yeah. And my, in he loves the beginning it down of there. Halloween 5. No, <laughs> he just was hanging out with some weird guy by the river. In Halloween 5 for a full year. And then here he lives there for like three years. Yeah, and there's a guy down there too. He lives outside. They're neighbors. Oh, yeah, that's his neighbor. That's not his caretaker. They're not friends or anything. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So he goes to babysit Jeremy. Jeremy's parents are uh, his hot mom dressed as a flapper. Yeah. And his his hot dad. Is that guy hot? Yeah, he's pretty hot. He's like a generic kind of hot. He kind of looks like Matthew McConaughey a tiny bit. He has a face where I think he should be British. Oh, one He's of got those. one of those faces. But why is he dressed as like a railroad fucking conductor? He looks like a like a human uh, character on Thomas the Tank yeah, Engine. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. And his wife's dressed as a flapper. Whatever. What is... No, not That's whatever. That's what they had in their closet. I guess. Go as a couple's thing. Yeah. Did you think the first time you saw this that the mom had the hots for... Uh, uh, Corey? No. Oh, I kind of did. I didn't get that. Oh, I, I get like, that he's just... They know him like he's a nice kid. There may be, I don't know, maybe they, they kind of know that his fami- family situation is kind of weird. They're a little protective Boy, is of him. it. it gets Boy, real, is it. It gets real weird. Why is his mom fucking like that, dude? Why is his mom got to be like that? Stepdad just wants to eat spaghetti and watch his movies. Yeah. Yeah, so there is a familiarity. They know Corey. He's a nice boy. They they tell he him that he mows their lawn and mm-hmm. takes helps take care of their their son Jeremy. The little this little shit ass kid. I, I don't like the abrupt shift in the relationship between Jeremy and Corey because like when they're first hanging out watching the thing, they seem to be like getting right? on okay, and then all of a sudden Jeremy's like, "Fuck you, dude. You suck at babysitting. Fuck you." And then <laughs> runs off to be a little I'm shit. Going to bed. Yeah. It's like what? Why can't we have the the nice relationship between uh, uh yeah in or- the first. 20- in 2018 yeah it just it's that's it just doesn't quite work it's too abrupt it's not as there's not that funny kind of back and forth between them there is at first and then they're like oh yeah we want you to we want you to want to see this kid die Yeah, we so. kind of want you to root for michael to maybe show up and kill this <laughs> yeah so we're gonna make him like an annoying little asshole real fast uh jeremy locks Corey 
in the like third story attic. Yeah. Kinda. So what it is is because. The mom explains to Corey that this kid is afraid of Michael, understandably, after all the events in Haddonfield, and Michael's also magic. So she's like, yeah, he's he's afraid of, of Michael, so, you know, just, I guess, you know, be sensitive about that, and, like, you know, just if you're wondering maybe why he's acting weird, there's that. So then what happens is when this kid runs upstairs, he, I think he, like, knocks over a lamp on his way or something. He basically just makes it so that it sounds like someone could have broken into the house. And he's yelling for Corey. Yeah. And he's, the yell is kind of coming from upstairs. So Corey, uh, I think when he walks through the kitchen, he realizes there's a knife missing. Because there was, like, a loaf of zucchini bread on the counter. And yeah. so he's like, oh, fuck, someone grabbed this knife. So he kind of walks up the stairs towards this attic. And he looks in the attic and the... Jeremy, the little kid, shuts him in there and locks the door mm-hmm. and then just starts teasing him. He's such a little asshole. He starts like, oh, Corey, you're going to piss your pants. You're afraid of Michael. And the kind of shit like that. Corey is knocking on the door, yelling to be let out. And this is presumably, this is like, all happens over the span of like a few hours. Like this is around when the parents come back home. And <laughs> when I saw it coming from a mile away, but it was still so fucking great. The... The house is like this, um, when you walk in, the entryway is open, so the ceiling is goes like three School stories house. up or whatever, and it's like kind of this winding staircase, and the attic's at the top, so it's like the entrance to the attic opens, and you're just, it's the railing, and then down three stories, so Corey gets this door open, knocks this kid backwards, and the kid fucking falls like a sack of potatoes down three floors right in front of the parents. He like bounces up too. (laughs) And that's our cold opening is they're screaming and it's... Well, yeah, because well, when they walked in, they hear Corey be like, I'm going to kill you, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah. And then he kicks the door open. It knocks Jeremy over. And so she looks up and she sees Corey staying there with a knife. Yeah, he finds the knife. Yeah, yeah, so he's looking pretty guilty. Uh, Smash cut to awesome opening credits with great music by john carpenter and pumpkins kind of uh birthing from each other yeah it's cool you cool. got these pumpkins that are kind of like splitting open in the front and then there's pumpkins inside of those pumpkins and mm-hmm. it kind of felt nightmare before christmasy a little bit uh yeah so now it's uh three years later it's 2022 we have caught up to present day yeah uh, apparently the myers house was destroyed yeah you see that in a just in the opening credits yeah clipping, i think so that sucks mm-hmm. that house pretty fucking iconic and i was just, it just was and that was the end of kilt yep that was it was a pretty important part of like kills. he wanted to come home mm-hmm. so i guess that's why he's living in a sewer now because he doesn't have a home to go to right yeah there's nowhere for him to stare out a window no so he'll just go fucking live in a sewer i guess lori has got this opening narration that we realize is from her book that she's, she's writing. writing a book just like gail weathers yeah 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 I like this little costuming touch. I noticed it when we when we first saw this movie, and uh, I I just like it. Lori's wearing a ring that's like a little fidget ring. It's got these oh. um, it's like a gold band with these gold little like ball bearings on it that you can like slide around. I've seen them on Etsy before, so hmm. it's like a little fidget thing, and I like that for a character who's dealing with stuff that she's got like a little fidget anxiety accessory if you if you worked on costuming on this movie i noticed it it was good (laughs) so laura's talking about how michael myers disappeared on that night in 2018 he hasn't shown up since but the town is on edge they they don't know what happened they uh begin to suspect any murder that happens to be from michael we see people like shot in the head and they're like do you think it was michael no he doesn't use guns and she's basically implying that just like his evil even in his absence has an effect on the town which we saw in halloween kills that was like the kind of the thesis of that on each other yeah and and one of these kills in the the opening montage there is oscar's mom yeah oscar allison's friend who was killed in 2018 and we saw his mom in halloween kills come to the hospital and see her son's body so at some point in the intervening years uh she killed herself hanging in the same costume that he was wearing when he died oh i didn't uh, notice the uh, with the cape and everything so oh, jesus yeah it's a uh, pretty dark pretty bleak 
Yeah. But um, yeah, now it's 2022 and, and Corey's riding around on his bicycle. I like that he starts the movie off riding a bicycle. Oh, he, and then he gets a little motorcycle. Then he gets a, a motorci- motorcycle. Yeah. He just, it's, it's just gradual. Right away, he just starts gradually going bad, you know? Yeah. Start, especially we see him starting the movie. He's drinking chocolate milk. He drinks chocolate milk a lot. Uh, yeah, what's with the milk thing? In this? I don't know. I don't know. Because he's innocent. But then not, I don't know. I just feel like it's gross to drink that much chocolate milk. Yeah, because when he was babysitting Jeremy, they're like, help yourself to anything in the fridge, and there's beers in there, and instead he gets the milk chocolate out. Chocolate milk. Yeah. Chocolate milk and zucchini bread. Just like if you run around a lot like Corey is, chocolate milk is like not a good one. Yeah, let me just drink a gallon of milk and ride my bike to work. <laughs> Hey, want to talk to you about our first sponsor this week, Dadgrass. It's the holiday season, and I feel like every year I get suckered into thinking the holidays are a break, when in reality it can be one of the most stressful times of year. This year, however, Dadgrass has you covered. Their CBD products will keep you chilled out and also make a great gift. They've got something for everyone, including those impossible to shop for family members and even your beloved furry friends. Dadgrass has pre-rolled joints, hemp flour, tinctures, gummies, and even CBD dog bones. Their products are very low in THC and high in CBD, so you can enjoy all the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. And now they offer a variety of flavors for their CBD gummies, like classic blackberry ginger, good time hibiscus lime, and nighttime midnight berry. I love anything with ginger in it, so that blackberry ginger is a new favorite. The best part is that all Dadgrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over. And it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. Right now, Dadgrass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash deadmeat. Go to dadgrass.com slash deadmeat for 20% off your first order. One more time, that's dadgrass.com slash deadmeat. Our next sponsor this week is Uncommon Goods. If you want to avoid boring, basic, and bland gifts this year, Uncommon Goods is your secret weapon. Uncommon Goods has truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. Whether you need something kind of silly for Secret Santa or something sincere for a family member, Uncommon Goods will have something perfect for them. I actually ordered myself a new desk lamp from Uncommon Goods and I absolutely love it. I needed something that wouldn't take up a ton of space and that was also kind of unique. I got this hoop-shaped LED lamp that changes colors, and it's really helped keep the early evening gloom away since the sun is setting so much earlier now. It also doubles as a ring light, which isn't what it was intended to be, but it's extremely flattering on video chats, so that's just a nice bonus. When you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting small artists and small independent businesses. These fine products are often made in small batches, so shop now before they sell out this holiday season. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash deadmeat. That's uncommongoods.com slash deadmeat for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods. We're all out of the ordinary. Uh, he works for his stepdad, Ronald. Ronald. We love we Ronald. Love Ronald. Mm-hmm. One of the best parts of this movie. Th- that's the thing. No matter what, David Gordon Green he gets these little side characters and yes. he gets he casts them so well. Yeah. And they're just little like little townies. Little townies. Like the guy at the the, the meat the guy meat, at the, the supermarket. Yeah, the butcher at the supermarket. Yeah. Shining star of Halloween ends is the guy cutting up meat at the supermarket. It's, it's just these little roles are cast so well and that and I love them always. Except for the fucking punks who bully. Oh my god, Corey. the Gen Z bullies. The Gen Z bullies. <laughs> yeah, such... The Gen Z marching band bullies. <laughs> they're like, you know how in um like Romero zombie movies, I think especially Dawn of the Dead, where all the zombies have different little outfits. Yeah. I feel like there's always a cheerleader zombie or like a I don't know, like a school teacher zombie or a dentist zombie. They're all so specific. That's what these kids feel like they're You got a marching band bully you've got no they're all in marching band are they, they all marching yeah band? I, I thought, thought just the one was no wearing it. I, only one of them's wearing the fucking oh. outfit but they say we're in marching band we're high school oh, seniors okay. we're gonna bully this 24 year old right sure uh got a uh, got a guy with a mullet because it's gen z you got a guy who the internet thought was danny, danny gonzalez, gonzalez in the trailer but it actually looks like danny and spencer it had a looks kid looks like Danny Gonzalez and Spencer Charnas had a child. It's mm-hmm. uncanny. 
once you see it, you'll never unsee it. <laughs> yeah, but they like bully Corey because they want to. They try to hey Mister. They him. try to hey Mister. Yeah, uh-huh. so he can buy beer for him, and when he doesn't, they're like, "Oh, you're that freak who killed that kid." Yeah, and even though he was found innocent, mm-hmm. obviously the whole town is like. He's that guy who killed the kid. Right. So he's ostracized. We gotta have a scapegoat. Mm-hmm. We need someone. We need like a a punching bag. Kind of. Yeah. And and Lori happens to drive up and see them bullying. And she's like, knock that shit off. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, we got the freak show and the psycho. But which one is which? <laughs> who is the monster and who is the man? <laughs> <laughs> and then Lori and Corey stab out their tires. Yeah. Lori has a fucking switchblade. And she's like, who's going to go first, me or you? And she helps Corey fucking pop their tires. Because she's the world's coolest grandma. Uh, when, yeah, when they started to bully Corey, he had his glass Yoohoo bottle and he crushed it in his hands and the glass went into his hands. It's real gross. Lots of close ups of out. him picking that mm. glass out. So Lori's like, oh, I'll take you to, uh, the doctors, which is just so happened to be where my granddaughter works. Mm-hmm. Uh, Allison works at, I think it's the, it's not the hospital where Halloween kills no, it was. Seems it's like, like it's a smaller doctor's office. Or something. Yeah. It's a smaller practice. And Lori brings in Corey. And these two have immediate fuck me eyes for each other. Yeah. Like she Corey brings in and, and, and Allison. Allison, not, not Corey, Corey and Lori. Lori. But you know what <laughs> you else? Know, you never Jamie know. Jamie Lee. Uh, so <laughs> he brings in, she brings in Corey and just the look from Allison is like, mm. Mm. she it, is licking it's her like, it, is a, it is a Twilight meet cue. They it's, instantly are into each other. It's very. It's way too he's much. He's clearly, he's super angsty and you know as an outside (laughs) viewer you're like he's clearly weird and dangerous kind of but in the universe of this movie it's like oh boy and i get it she has to know of him the whole town does yeah he's the guy she definitely knows who he is i am assuming he knows who she is definitely everyone knows who she is so they know of each other but there's it's just so it's comically abrupt yeah. How Lori brings in Corey and Alice is just like, yeah. <laughs> is just wants to jump his bones. And we've got the trope that I love that I just, I always notice it. And that, again, this is what I wonder if there's a TV tropes page for where it is female character ta- tenderly taking care of the wounded male character. And it's like their romantic kind of mm-hmm. bond. Like it's wrapping like his Like Beauty hand. and the Beast, that yeah. scene where she is is taking care of his wounds is like an escalation of their relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So while she's tending to Corey, the doctor's there. Uh, what's his name? Oh, I don't know. Fantasy it? football doctor. Fantasy football doctor's there. And he's like, cute, isn't she? Talking about Allison. Yeah. And then he like <laughs> yells at her for something. And then when he leaves, Corey's like, you shouldn't let him talk to you like that. Ooh, I was pissed at Corey. Cor- yeah, she was real pissed. But then I was like, wait, th- but that ties into the whole theme. He's it like does. blaming her. Placing for, blame on the wrong person. Yeah. And because something feels out of your control, maybe. And that happens a lot with Lori in this movie. Like, she later runs into... Because David Gordon Green just loves to make my kill counts inaccurate. She <laughs> later runs into the sister of Sandra, who survived getting stabbed in the neck with a fluorescent light bulb and Halloween kills. Yeah. So, Sandra survived... That was your golden chainsaw, too, wasn't it? Uh, it may have been. We almost, it was nominated for best kill at the Dead Meat <laughs> Horror Awards. Turns out not even a kill. But uh, Sandra is unable to speak after it. And her husband was murdered. And her sister blames Lori. And the whole town seems to have kind of blamed Lori for Michael's killings. With some people being like, if you hadn't instigated Michael Myers, he wouldn't have come and killed people four years ago. So I think Corey's line is supposed to be in line with that kind of theme. And it's how the town blames him for Jeremy's death. It's just a lot of blame being thrown around. Yeah. And that's something that people do Mm -hmm. in regards to like, you know, like crime stories where, you know, if you click on like, I don't know, any like new ish crime story, like if someone's murdered or kidnapped or whatever, you will inevitably see a comment. It's like, well, if they didn't blah, 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 or if they were, you know, because it's, I think part of it is just humans are scared of things like that happening to them and so choose to place blame on whoever it happened to because it it makes you it it helps you rationalize that like this would not happen to me because i know better yeah it happened for a reason yeah so i can avoid it right sometimes things don't happen for a reason right uh so yeah Lori specifically brought 
Corey there to to uh, hook up with Allison because she is no longer dating middle aged question mark officer Doug. <laughs> would you say he looks like the uh, a guy who would play a high schooler in a seventies movie? He, no, he looks like. Yeah, he'd be a greaser in Greece. Yes, a hundred percent. He's you know? that exact. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You haven't seen Greece in a while? Go watch Greece. Oh, Look at those are, greasers, dude. Old. <laughs> those, those guys are fucking taking out their second mortgage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He definitely. <laughs> he looks like he would be in, like in a seventies movie if he was yeah. twenty, like late twenties. I'd be like, okay, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. This guy's sure. a hard living late twenty year old. Uh, that mid- Midwest life i guess oh yeah this does take place in illinois i think filmed in north carolina maybe okay one of those southern states i'm pretty sure north carolina Lindsay wallace is here for no reason really just because she survived the last movie yeah she's in two scenes i think uh, i think three because she's the bartender or she owns the bar or something she works at the bar where they frequent so she's in a couple of scenes there and then one scene just hanging out with allison and Lori. but this is when Lori's talking about like you should date Corey allison he's cool and uh show grief your tits and say she, fuck you yeah like he's the kind of guy that makes you want to just rip your shirt off and show grief your fucking tits yeah and there's like a push in on her <laughs> it's it's weird dialogue, which this movie is full of, but she sells it well enough for it to work. Yeah. This line, at least. And it's just it's just good life <laughs> advice, I guess. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Show grief your tits, man. Yeah. Uh, we also see Corey's home life where he's got <laughs> his weird fucking mom, his dude. Weird mom. She says, boys who keep secrets don't get custard for dessert. Boys... That is like the end of fucking another brick in the wall where they're like, <laughs> if you don't eat your... Your meat, you won't have any pudding or whatever. That guy's yelling over the end of that. <laughs> Gressel knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> don't get any pudding if you don't eat your meat. <laughs> Boys yep. who keep secrets don't get custard. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we also see how, like, the band bully brings his car to... Because Cor- Corey works at, like, a junkyard auto place. And the band bully brings his car in. And we yeah, see, like, he his... fucked up his car. His dad's dragging him there by the ear. Like, he's like good for nothing son. I mean, he's... Li- like, it's funny, but then he, like, starts hitting him, too. So you're like, okay, so there's the yeah, yeah, cycle yeah. of abuse thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lori runs into the... What's his name? The cop, um, oh, yeah. the tire cop, Frank, from Halloween 2018, where, again, thought he died. He survived. He was in Halloween Kills in the hospital with her. And they run into each other at the grocery store. They got some uh, Don't Fear the Reaper in Muzak form yes. playing over the speakers. And the, the song also plays in the end credits because that song is, you know, infamously in the first movie when Lori and Annie are driving around. And Sheriff Brackett almost catches them smoking weed. Mm -hmm. But they have... I love their scene together. Frank is a great actor. I forget the name of the guy who does him. Oh, Uh, I'll look it up. But he he has just such a nice face. He's just a sweet old man. He's very kind. Yeah, and the two of them have this nice real uh, chemistry. And he he talks about how after surviving the attack from Michael Myers, he's like found a new lease on life and he's learning Japanese and he wants to go travel there. And that's he, Will Patton. That's right. Will Patton. And he was also in the first purge. Yes. Uh, and, and remember the Titans. Oh, okay. A great, great actor. Great scene between the two of them. So Allison and Corey go to a Halloween party at a bar. Yeah. And, uh, they're wearing masks, hiding yeah. their faces. Corey's, He's like this scarecrow, this, this terrifying little mask. Scarecrow mask. It's a scary little mask. Yeah, it's, she's got like a cat mask. Yeah, she's got like a, a normal costume on. Well, normal. She looks like she is about to go work a shift at a sex club. Like it's a very like I think that you're saying that because we saw Jane's Addiction last night and for part of it, the dancers on stage had leather cat masks on. And I think you're just thinking of that. Maybe. That might be it. They were very good. They were. Yeah. One of them is his wife. Mm-hmm. The lead singers. But yeah, she's like dressed as a black cat. And then yeah, Corey's got his little little scarecrow. It's like a plastic smiley scarecrow face. And I, I kind of like, because I was sitting there thinking, why a scarecrow? You know? And I guess just kind of the idea that a he scarecrow. The town. Yeah. He's, a scarecrow is the construct of a person that scares the crows like Mm -hmm. it scares birds away from the field and that's kind of what the town does to him is they just make him into this fake person that they're all afraid of yeah so i think that's kind of a nice little you get the sense that he's happy to let loose for once uh in the past four years he like gets on the ground and is like dancing he's laying on this sticky sticky floor (laughs) is that the yeah (laughs) i was saying that there's these videos where it's like 
uh, insert band here shreds like there's beach boys shreds and i think there's like david bowie and Mick Jagger shred yeah. where it's the music taken out and sound effects put it back in so it's what it would sound like with no music there's like grease lightning uh-huh. there's a clip of that too but i just that entire club scene if you did that would just be like on that sticky floor <laughs> he goes to get a drink and jeremy's mom is there i don't know why she's at this party this party is loud and it's got a lot of horned up teens dancing. Yeah. And she's just sitting there at the bar drinking. Yeah, there's got to be other weird way to spend your time, places. lady. But she sees Corey and she's mad that he's having a good time. How dare you have fun four years later? I mean, I I get it. She's never going to forgive that guy. No, yeah. and never. And, you know, you don't got to be at this bar. Just... <laughs> she doesn't have to be there. That's the thing. But she definitely yells at him so much that he runs away and leaves. Oh, we forgot Nick Castle. Uh, has a cameo oh, here. Cameo. The original actor of Michael Myers. He's and dressed as like a flasher kind, or like a. He opens up his coat. And he's looks like, like, you he's like what operation. You see? And he's got like organs. No, and stuff. no. He literally says a line from the first movie: "See anything you like?" Because that was when, in the original Halloween, when Michael Myers dressed as Ghost Bob comes into yes. the bedroom. Uh, Linda drops the sheet and is like, see anything That's you like. Right. So this is a direct reference to that. And then he almost does, he doesn't quite do the head tilt, but he kind of looks at him and oh. does a little like. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Michael gets his head tilt in. Oh, yes, he does. So, yeah, Corey is like scared out of this bar. And he runs away crying. And uh, Allison chases him down. And then he's yelling at her of like. He blames her for bringing him there. And he's like, where were you when he left? her to get a drink at the bar yeah which is kind of dumb She's like i literally standing probably 10 feet away from you yeah this bar's not that big he's uh oh he almost gets hit by a car when he runs out which was a big jump scare in the theater that mm. was mixed way too loud and yeah. uh he's like yelling at her for for taking him out and she has her hands out in she a puts weird her hands thing. out to him and it just made me think of clone high yeah she's just standing there like for this whole time when he's yelling at her she's just like it's it's so weird i don't know man uh but he runs away from her and gets found by the band bullies gen z bullies gen z bullies it's it's like 80s punks but like done the gen z way Mm -hmm. yeah i mean one of them has a mullet one of them has a mullet, yeah. And then one of them is, like, the reluctant one who's like, guys, stop it. Mm-hmm. And she ends up getting, like, the most brutal death of them all. She does, yeah. But I guess she should have stopped her friends. But... I don't know. They're... Well, no. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the blowtorch. The blowtorch is pretty, is pretty gnarly. It's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. But uh, they end up bullying him right over the edge of a bridge. He fucking falls down. Mm-hmm. And they think they kill him. So they're like, let's get out of here. Yeah. The one kid's <laughs> insisting. Like, he, he fell. fell. <laughs> he fell. Okay. That's my story. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to do a uh, Lois Duncan novel, our little side adventure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Our little I know what you did last summer, killing Mr. Griffin style. Okay, he fell. All right, we went yeah. too far and he fell. Oh, he needs Ryan. Is it Felipe? Was it? Yeah. Just grabbing Jennifer Love Hewitt's face and be like, he fell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it gets real weird here. I mean, hey, hey you know who we haven't talked about yet Michael? in this Halloween movie? Michael fucking Myers. Michael. We're like uh, 35 minutes into this movie. Yeah. No Michael Myers yet. But so here he is. Don't Corey's worry. Corey's unconscious and we see something drag him into the sewer. We're assuming it's Michael because who else would it be? If mm-hmm. it's not Michael, then what are we doing in this movie? There's like a, a homeless guy who lives down there and he sings this song. You hear it a few times and I don't know how to pronounce this. It looks very Irish to me. It's a <laughs> oil, oil of feast, feast. O i l l i p h e i s t, and um, I just thought it was interesting because it's a song about a, or rather the like creature. It's a a sea serpent like monster in Irish mythology, and basically the story in one version of the story, the oil oily feast. Someone is screaming at me right now. Um, swallows a drunken piper named O'Rourke and the monster becomes so annoyed with the Piper's piping because it's in him alive and he's playing music that he coughs him back up and spits him out and I don't know it just kind of reminded me of of Corey being dragged into the sewer and then he gets you know he leaves because the homeless guy is even like I he see let him you leave what the fuck yeah, yeah. I see him drag yeah, people yeah, yeah. in there and no one ever comes out but right. you came out so what's so the deal so this Piper leaves the serpent's belly oh, in interesting. the interesting I, nice. I, I 
you know, I have to think it was kind of on purpose. It, had to it be seems intentional. intentional. Yeah. So yeah, Corey wakes up. He's in Michael's little. Yeah, Michael. Michael fucking lives in the sewer. He's fucking Pennywise. Yes. Uh, he's Pennywise. Yes. He's old. He's weak. And Corey's trying to get out of there, and Michael like grabs him and is starting to strangle him. And then they lock eyes, and you see in Corey's eyes flashes of him getting into a fight with the band kids and him knocking Jeremy down there. Yeah, and so it's flashes of stuff that's happened to Corey. Yeah. So is it Michael seeing that? Or I mean, I guess because later Corey's like yeah. talks about the feeling he had the first time he looked in Michael's eyes and it, I wonder if this is just, he has, it's kind of his life flashing before his eyes almost. And this is him deciding, fuck it. Yeah. What I think it is, is cause he later, he tells Lori, you should have surrendered to that feeling you had when you first looked into his eyes. Yeah. So I assume that feeling is a sense of like evil. Mm hmm. He looks into Michael's eyes, he feels this evil, and he's thinking about getting bullied and getting blamed for this kid's death, and that makes him decide to go bad. Right. Succumb to, to the feeling of evil. to just fully give in to, like, that potential was probably always there, but now he's just deciding, okay, I'm going to lean into it I'm not going to fight it anymore. Right. We thought. At first, <laughs> that maybe this was Jason goes to hell. I kind of did. And that I Michael thought... transferred his the shape, transferred In... the shape yeah. into Corey. I thought that's what was happening because, as we've established, Michael is basically magic. And I thought that we had a weird mind meld kind of thing where we were going to have or it's almost, not that, like, it's... almost like a Chucky thing where we've got Michael and Corey in the same body. Yeah, it's not done very clearly. No. It's confusing. And then Corey leaves the sewer. The the homeless guy's like, Arr! and then the homeless guy takes out a nut. The homeless guy starts saying that he's Michael Myers and he's that like, he wants that the mask. mask. I'm Michael Myers. I'm Michael Myers. He takes out a knife and then Corey t gets the knife from him and stabs him and yeah, kills him. Yeah, he grabs him. The, the guy's hand and kind of flips the knife around on him, stabs him mm -hmm. to death. And, uh, yep. Then uh, he goes and finds Allison and tells Allison, I killed someone. So we're all thinking, yeah, he killed the... He, yeah, he just, just killed the homeless guy. Him. Oh, you're going to tell her that? No, I, I think he was talking about Jeremy. Because yeah. it goes from that to him taking her to uh, Jeremy's family's abandoned home. Right. So it's like, oh, I killed someone. But, like, it's also a weird thing to say because she knows. Everyone knows him in town. Everyone knows what happened to him. So for him to be like, sorry, I was acting so weird. I killed someone. It's like, especially coming after the scene with the homeless guy, you're like, wait, is he talking about that? No, no, he's talking about the kid. Well, yeah, everyone fucking knows. It's, it's just weird. I just, it's also a thing where I'm like, Allison, what do you see in him? Yeah, maybe at that point, just peace. I guess as a, again, this is like an external viewer thing where I'm aware that this is a movie and it's not real. Like, Corey only gets more attractive the weirder he gets. Like, sure. I think we can all agree, and that's kind <laughs> of the appeal. But if you're actually her, it's like, Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you. like, this is, uh, Lori starts to see Corey. Like, her flip on Corey is also very abrupt because she, you know, liked Corey and set him up with Allison. But then after he comes out of the sewer, I guess she sees in him the change because he's also standing by bushes, just like <laughs> he's Michael also Myers. Being a fucking weirdo. Yeah. Let's be fair. She's looking out the window just like in the original yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It, it like it feels like a very Michael Myers behavior coming from him. Uh, I wrote down the quote, Am I in control or do the elements control me? Who mm -hmm. says that? Do we remember? I think that was Lori. Okay. So that's just like another like, yeah, is Corey in control or is he being uh, controlled Molded by into something else. Yeah, by both the town and by Michael Myers' eyes, I guess. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he takes Allison to the house and he shows her the blood spot where yeah. Jeremy. He's talking fell. about how the town needed a new boogeyman, so that's who they made him. Then, then Lori goes to talk to Corey's mom, his weird fucking mom, <laughs> oh, and yeah. she talks about how this town turned on my son because they needed a a new boogeyman after yours. Uh, disappeared. So again, Lori being blamed right. for everything so now that Michael Myers did. Now they're gonna take it out on my perfect boy, Corey. <laughs> my, she would be my, so lucky to date my son. Yeah, my perfect sexy boy, Corey. My little sexy son, Corey. Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> 
Yeah, I just wrote here, the crop of men in Haddonfield is slim pickings. Yeah, because they're at the diner and fucking Doug is also there with all Doug his cop with all buddies. His comp, they have that court. They always sit there. You oh, know for it. sure. That's They've got the tables corner. pushed together. And There's he comes two up, guys named Joe. Yeah, he comes up to her. I, I love that line. He's like, yeah, it's Joe Grillo's birthday. So Joe Ross made him a thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> so of course they have two it's, Joes and have to. <laughs> it's perfect. Just that little touch is like, again, Townie's amazing. Awesome, yeah. Always A plus in and like after he he has an argument with Allison and Corey and he goes back to sit with them, they're like, "Do we gotta kick someone's ass?" Like a, co- a group of cops would yeah, say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Doug's like, "No, I got this," and he follows Corey, Corey home after Corey drops Allison off. She invites him inside, and Corey's like, "Maybe another time." Right? Dude should have just fucking done it because instead, or maybe he wanted to lead Doug to the sewer. Oh, maybe he, he knew, knew he was, Doug was following. I bet him. he did. I bet because he's he, basically Edward Cullen. He knows. He's got. He's got like a sixth sense, you know, <laughs> like vampire sense. Sure. Right. He takes, he drives his little motorcycle that Ronald gave him so that he could get to work on time. Mm-hmm. He drives that uh, back to the sewer mm-hmm. and Doug follows him and Doug finds that homeless guy's body. And then uh, Corey like uh, comes out of nowhere, pushes him and then teehees into the yes, sewer. he's running around like, whoa, 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 hee, 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 like this little <laughs> trickster god just running around down here. And yeah, leads him into the sewer and... And of course, Doug is like, you don't fuck with Doug, whatever. Doug like Mulaney. Says, yeah. <laughs> Follows him into the sewer and Corey's like, Michael, I gave you this. Mm-hmm. But Michael's still weak and Doug kind of kicks his ass. It feels bad to watch someone kick Michael's ass like that. Dude, later Corey fucking out wrestles him and take, steals his mask. It's weird. It's a bummer. I guess. I, like Michael's old. Michael's old and also what's he been eating yeah. down here? Well, that's the thing is here. Um, after, so Doug sees like Michael's face yes, in the wall. There's like a, it's so bizarre. Cause it clearly, it, it's not like a thing where sometimes your brain thinks it's seeing a face and it's no, not. This it's is Michael's clearly face. Michael's face in relief on this wall. But I saw an interesting comment on Reddit, uh, because Michael also has to take his knife out of rock. It's like in there and you know, he's living under Haddonfield. He's like in the roots of Haddonfield. His evil is in the roots. And this comment on Reddit said that like with Michael's face in the stone wall and his knife in the stone, it's almost like a tree growing around uh, like a sign or something. Yeah, like yeah. like the town has grown a- up and around Michael's evil. It's embedded within it. Yeah. So that kind of makes sense That's a little bit Elden Ring. There's some stuff in Elden Ring that's like that. Okay. Where it's like... A person being in, like embodied or like becoming part of like a system of roots and like there it's creepy. Corey helps Michael kill Doug, and after Michael kills him, oh my he, gosh, like, it's s- extremely homoerotic. This oh scene. sure yeah, because Corey's like holding him like stab. Like for show me. me how you how you do it. Yeah, and, and after Michael kills him, he like stands up straighter. He has regained some strength. They're both just breathing really heavy. In the, each there's other. a lot of the heavy breathing. Yeah, but I think kills kind of establish that Michael grows stronger with kills. It's kind of a thing. Mm. It, it's it's the weird thing that like these movies don't commit one way or the other with Michael's supernatural abilities. Yeah. They're like, no, he's a he's a completely just a regular human, but he also gains strength when he kills someone. <laughs> it's like what? He can also maybe work. teleport in when? the end of Halloween Kills. He's just up. I mean, no, he's probably he went just really through the quiet. back door. Yeah, yeah he's, he's he, got all the stealth. He's very ones. quiet. He's yeah. sneaky. He's but I mean, the man. end of that movie, he survives the most. Wild ass stabbed in the down. spine and shit. Yeah. Survives that woman carrying a what is it? She has like an iron. Yeah. <laughs> everyone's favorite. Uh, yeah. So now Corey goes back to Allison's. And he, you know he smells. Oh, yeah. He smells like shit. He smells bad. He's in that sewer. He smells like He's been playing around in a sewer. Mm -hmm. With Michael, who is now also on the prowl. He has left the sewer now that he has strength. And he's like, he's stalking Maury again. Michael smells so bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Real bad. Uh, Corey goes back to Allison's and they have shit. Yeah. After he's like kind of weepily asking her, did Michael let you live or did he... Did you escape? Or did you escape? Says and, her mom saved her. Right. Yeah. But yeah R.I.P. Judy Greer's fuck. character. And I'm assuming he gets to shower. <laughs> I hope so. I really hope or so. Or else she's gonna U- need... UTI for the yep. ages. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> gonna get the cranberry juice, baby. <laughs> Sugar-free. 
are going to do that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um. Okay, so Allison works at a doctor's office, like we said, and she was trying to get a promotion, and she did not get it. Her coworker Deb did. We uh, love Deb. Deb, another great side character. There's a great moment where Deb, she's kind of like a vapid, uh, fast-talking, um, gossipy mm -hmm. person. And at one point, Allison's like, will you just shut the fuck up? And, and there's a pause. And she's like, I know, right? I just never know when to oh stop. God, right. I, like, I, it's I never great. shut the fuck up. I yeah. never know. <laughs> so uh, props to that actress who I'm looking up just to, to give full credit to. Deb was played by... Uh, M Michelle Dawson. And see, that's the thing with uh, David Gordon Green movies. Half these names as like the side characters don't have any Wikipedia articles. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he finds these people, yeah. but they're great. Like his casting yeah. is one of the s biggest strengths of his films, I think. I think it's right around here too, because there's a few things going on at once. Uh, Lori goes to that bar is it the same bar they have the Halloween party? I'm not sure, but the dad from yeah, the beginning. Because Kyle there. works there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Or Lindsay. Sorry. Yeah. Kyle so Richards. the dad from the beginning is there, and so they talk about his son Jeremy, and they talk about Corey, and he talks about how, unlike his wife, he wanted to be able to forgive Corey, and he believed that it was an accident, and he he hated that people we're turning Corey into this monster because he felt like it was everyone taking his pain and making it about them, mm -hmm. which I thought was a, a neat, I liked that scene a lot in that character moment because I, that's, I think a relatable, yeah. like we do that constantly. Yeah. We like, do, we take other people's tragedies and make it about us. Right. Exactly. And yeah, he's pissed that that's happening with his kid's death. Right. And so he wants to forgive Corey, but he apparently saw him the other day, and as soon as he looked into his eyes, he just, those eyes weren't the same. He knew something was. <laughs> he just tried. It's, it's like a so little flashback. Funny. He pulls over to the side of the road where Corey's walking, and Corey bends down to look in the window, and the dad just. Just like nope, looks, looks forward and keeps driving. It. He doesn't even say anything. Yeah, he just drives it's pretty away. Funny. <laughs> this is when uh, Deb and the, the fantasy football doctor go to his very nice house. Super. He's got his own courtyard, mm -hmm. complete with a pool that is open in Illinois, Illinois in, October. in October. Get the fuck no. out of here. That thing should have a cover. With leaves all Leaves over everywhere. Yeah. But no, they're talking about like, they almost seem like they want to go swimming. Mm -hmm. Or at least they go out to the, like the outside like fireplace area. Yeah, but then he uh, he requests, he's like, oh, Alexa, play Tell Me With Your Eyes by Rob Galbraith, which I think is a funny. Mm -hmm. A lot of eyes yeah. stuff, and you know, the devil's eyes. Yes. And then what is it? She gets like, I forget if she gets changed or what, but she starts walking away. And there's like this zoom in <laughs> yeah. on him where he's looking at her and he just goes, Yes. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> great, lecherous dude here. Yeah. Uh, Michael, well, no, she's taking a shower and then she hears a commotion and she comes out and fucking Corey in his scary ass scarecrow mask is stabbing the shit out of the doctor with the corkscrew. Yeah. And she manages to close the door because they're outside. He man she manages to close the door and keep Corey outside. But guess what? This is a tag team tag match, team. motherfucker. Michael Myers tag shows team. up right behind her. And he does his patented, raise her up, stab her into the wall so that her feet dangle. Yep, classic. We, classic, doesn't make any sense it unless that no knife sense. is like it's, two feet long. I I mean, I know Mythbusters has done horror movie episodes before. They have to. They did the Jason X face smash. This, I think this is a great one for Mythbusters. If a human body can be held up like that with a, a single knife. A I kitchen don't knife, yeah. Think that that's possible. There's no way that it has the length to go through the body and then into the wall enough to, to hold, hold up it. the body. There's no fucking way. There's no fucking way. I don't care, though. I'm not. That's not an actual no, criticism. No, I don't care, but I'm just <laughs> curious. I just want to see the Mythbusters episode. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Again, that is not... I'm not dinging that or anything. It's, no, it's fine. No. It's a it's a fun kill and it's great. So yeah, it's fun little Michael Corey. Michael Corey tag adventure. team. Cut to wide shot of a street. Corey riding on his motorcycle. Close up. Corey hands around his stomach. We it all thought every single person watching this movie thought that Michael was riding the motorcycle behind him, holding his waist. It's not, we it's all Allison, thought it. It's Allison, but, but we. All wanted it to be Michael. We all the the edit, it. I can't even tell if it's on purpose that they want you to think it might be Michael. 
I have to think maybe they understood in the edit how funny that it's cut so was. fucking funny but <laughs> it's good like yeah even our first time watching that both of us just started laughing and we both knew why yeah we both just yeah. knew that that was like what you expect with that rhythm of the editing our next sponsor this week is Lomi by Pila. We have four people living in our house and we produce a lot of garbage. Our friend and technical director, Gressel, in particular loves to cook and has been wanting to start composting food waste for years. I cannot describe how excited Gressel was when our Lomi showed up. He used to compost food waste back at home in Michigan using an outdoor system, but the Lomi electric composter fits right on our countertop and is an indoor appliance. Lomi allows us to turn turn food scraps into dirt with the push of a button. There's no smell when it runs, and it's super quiet too. What's not to love about less garbage? Food waste also makes up a huge portion of our environmental footprint. By reducing the amount of food we're sending to a landfill, we're helping to do our part. If you want to start making a positive environmental impact or just make cleanup after dinner that much easier, Lomi is perfect for you. Head to Lomi.com slash deadmeat and use the promo code deadmeat to get $50 off off your Lomi. That's $50 off when you head to lomi.com slash deadmeat and use the promo code deadmeat at checkout. Food waste is gross. Lomi is your solution. Our last sponsor this week is Beneath. Looking for more terror-filled content? Check out Beneath, a new scripted horror podcast loosely inspired by the dark conspiracies around the infamous sinking of the RMS Titanic. The podcast follows a group of scientists, academics, and treasure hunters who descend to the ocean's depths to answer lingering questions around the most famous shipwreck in history and recover a fabled lost treasure sealed in the wreckage. What they find instead is an ancient force that should never have been disturbed. With chilling sound design and terrifying twists and turns, Beneath is a visceral audio experience that is best consumed in the dark with your headphones on. You can binge listen to the entire first season of Beneath exclusively and ad-free on Wondery Plus. Sign up for Wondery Plus on Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app. Yeah. Is this when they go to the radio this station? This is the radio station. Because throughout, there's this radio DJ. Is it Willie the Kid? Something like who, that. Silly Willie or some he's shit. He's <laughs> kind of this like shock jock almost. Uh -huh. who, um, I don't know. He's kind of obsessed with the Michael Myers thing and is like kind of crudely speculating on certain aspects. Yeah, and the radio tower gets a few featured in a few, few shots. Pointed shots of the Apparently, radio tower. Apparently, an early idea for this movie was in fact what we both wanted it to be. Yes. And that it was Connell Cochran mm -hmm. and the fucking Shamrock uh Silver Shamrock Silver Shamrock Mass Company transmitting a a radio signal to turn people evil with the masks and that that would explain Michael Myers Fucking, I would have been so At into it. At this point, whatever. Yeah. At, like, by this I point, it, I don't even care if it doesn't really make sense. Be because, but like, I don't know if they changed it, like, if it was a lost thing where they're like, oh, too many people are guessing that, so we have to change it. Or if they were like, that'll be too divisive. But if that was the case, look at what you gave us. Right. You know? Like, just give us the fucking season of the witch thing and that that'll be fucking cool. Right. <laughs> even Let's, yeah it, it, when you think about it it makes no sense i guess even just for the fact that in halloween 3 they're watching halloween it's on just a, fine whatever it, it, you know in this what are they watching uh the thing, the thing. which also doesn't make sense because then in that universe did john carpenter make halloween right yeah they're watching john carpenter's the thing so so when they're watching the thing and they're like, who made this movie? Dude, that stuff. And I, then his credits. I always think about when stuff gets well, meta like that's that. That's the Scream Halloween thing. Yes, I There's get, I back get and forth so there. hung up yeah. on it. Like it's in this fun. universe, what's the reality here? I guess the simplest thing is John Carpenter made the thing and there is no There's Halloween There's no Halloween. Movie. Yeah. But whatever. Yeah, they go there and they're on the roof of uh, the radio station. They're just talking, doing their fucking romantic dialogue and whatever. And. Is this when they're like, I'll, I'll light the match to burn everything yeah, let's down? Burn it down. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. I think Corey jumps off the roof. He's like Aladdin, where he, <laughs> Aladdin jumps onto the carpet, and, but Jasmine doesn't know the carpet's there. Yeah. And he kind of does that, but it's a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like it's, a lower part of the roof. It's dead. But, yeah. And basically. <laughs> so. And then the DJ comes out there and is like, you got, 
Get away Get from the here. fuck out of here. I'm trying to DJ. Oh, also, ooh, I know who you guys are. I talk about you 24-7 on my radio station. He also blames Lori for Michael Myers, yeah, saying he that says, she teased him. Yeah, he says Lori teased a kid with brain damage, and then he snapped. So everyone yeah. has their own little version of events. Which I like. That's how it would go down, yeah. especially now, like, th- four years later after this shit happened. Right. You'd be like, how did that come to be? Maybe it was just this guy, yeah, who had some issues, and then that crazy Lori woman prodded him into killing. Well, I think it's also because like Lori teased a kid. So I think it's like, that's how, that's what he thinks originally happened is like Lori's the reason that like little baby Michael Myers decided to like snap. What? She wouldn't have been around. I know, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, it doesn't have to make sense. It's just what people make up and think. Like when he killed his sister? Well, like, or like, because in, in Halloween, the original one, how old is he supposed to be? At what point? When he's stalking... I was like 20 Lord. or something. I mean, I guess that's still like... Could that be like a kid? I don't know. I just think that that's what he means is like back in the day, Lori teased some kid with brain damage and he snapped. That's oh. why he was trying to kill her. Oh, okay. So this whole thing, Lori is actually watching them in her car. Oh, yeah. And she she gets the sense that like these two are thinking about running away. Mm-hmm. Um, Corey goes home and that that's when his mom slaps him, I think. Yeah, because she's like, where have you been? And she slaps him across the face and then she goes, oh no. And then she kisses him on the lips. Yeah, she does a weird kiss. And it's weird. And then she runs away and then Ronald's sitting there eating his spaghetti. Eating spaghetti. He goes, I hope you find love. Funny moment, funny line. Yeah. Funny cut away from him. Yeah. This is when, because apparently Corey sleeps in, in that the abandoned house. Dry blood he sleeps puddle. in the dried pool of blood, which is a bit much <laughs> a <little laughs> yeah, over dramatic, I think. Yeah. And he's awoken by this tapping noise, this like kind of banging noise. And it's Lori rocking back and forth on this chair because I think she followed him. Mm-hmm. And that's when she, we get her monologue about how there's two kinds of evil, evil that threatens the well-being of the tribe. From and the outside. Yeah, and then also there's the other kind that lives within us, and it's like a sickness or an infection. And it's, Lori says that she wants to help him. Yeah, it's external versus internal evil, and internal is more dangerous because you might not know you're infected. Yeah, and that's when, again, someone's pissed at Lori because it's <laughs> everything goes back to being Lori's fault. Because he says in... I guess it's a little fair that she started it by setting up him with her do- her granddaughter. Yeah. It's not like she knew that he was going to get all weird about it, but And this is when he's like, if I can't have her, no one will. Oh, I hate I'm it just that line. I thought there was going to be some twist on that line, but it just seems so canned kind of bad boyfriend. And I don't get the motivation, yeah, of why like I guess it's just like a he finally has someone who doesn't think he's evil and, you know, someone is who, the original person who made that happen for him is like, just kidding. I also think you're evil. I'm going to take that away from you. Mm-hmm. So I sure. get him wanting to really hold on to it. This is when he goes and beats up Michael and takes his mask. Oh, yeah, because he. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's this like a wide one shot of shot. Michael getting his ass kicked by Just Corey. wrestles him down and takes his mask. I think that's around when I leaned over and was like, dude, people are going to hate this. Yeah. Well, yeah, because people, people fucking love Michael Myers. I'm whatever on him. He's a silent killer and he's less fun than Jason. That's the thing that's making reviewing this for me hard because Halloween, I mean, I, I like the original, like Halloween itself is a great movie. The franchise, I don't really have much of an attachment to. It's probably my least favorite of the big three. Yeah, I don't have much. Even even Halloween is not my favorite Carpenter movie. It's not my favorite Carpenter it's either. It's probably not in the top three. Yeah, I mean, he's got so many good movies. Yeah. But like, so I don't have the kind of thorough knowledge of the series either. So it is hard for me to kind of say like what is on par for this series or not. Because they're all kind of a vague blob in my head. I mean, what is on par for a series that goes from uh, a cult is directing Michael's actions (laughs) to Busta Rhymes is running a reality show in Michael Michael Myers' house. Right. That's the other thing is, is there a single other franchise where the lead character Mm -hmm. plays three different timeline iterations of of the same character? Mm -hmm. Because Lori Strode in Halloween 2 is not the same Lori Strode in Halloween H2O. Oh, wait, no. H2O does follow two. Oh, it does follow two? So I guess it's just two timelines for her. Oh, it she is. She goes okay. one, two, two, H2O resurrection where she gets killed. Yeah. And then one. Oh, wait, no. 
she is referenced in Halloween four, five, six, which would go one, two, four, five, six. Mm-hmm. She's not in them, but uh, and then yeah, then there's one, twenty eighteen, yeah, kills ends. But I can't think of any other series that it's weird. does it like that, yeah. where it's the same person, the same protagonist, right, mm-hmm. playing that character. Yep, he takes Michael's mask and then he uh, instigates the band bullies by vandalizing their car. So they come to look and look for him at his workplace. It's night. It's after hours. Ronald's there just watching action movies on, with headphones. That's <laughs> yeah. all this guy wants. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want his wife to fuck his stepson. Yeah. Uh, we're assuming that relationship because he and Corey seem like a stepson. It and- just seems like a step. He, I don't yeah. know why he seems like a stepdad to me. Versus- Probably because Corey calls, well, him, Ronald calls him Ronald instead Ronald. of dad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the bullies are there and then, uh, Corey shows up and starts attacking them. He, it, this is the Christine sequence of this. Oh movie. yeah. Literally we're in like a junkyard. It's a with junkyard and, and they walk in and then, you know, the, the, like there's like headlights that flip on and they're all running from this. I think it's a truck. Well, it's- first, uh, Terry finds Billy dead in the car and he's like, Billy's dead. Billy's dead. Dead. Terry's got some line deliveries in this movie. I love it. It's fun. <laughs> it's, it's great. Yeah. Uh, the Danny Gonzalez bully, I don't remember his name, runs inside. He, te- he like hits the window and gets Ronald's attention. And oh, then yeah. Ronald gives him a gun. Yeah. And they go outside and Ronald realizes that Michael is actually Corey wearing the Michael mask. Mm-hmm. And the bully with the guns freaking out and just wants to shoot Michael and Ronald instinctively goes to protect Corey. And so Ronald gets shot. Yeah. It was a long shot too. Mm-hmm. That was an accurate headshot. It was very accurate. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I don't know anything about guns, but that gun, I don't know. I didn't think it'd be that accurate. Yeah. And now uh, Stacy's dead. What happens to Stacy? I don't know. I think that's the line. He yells, Stacy's dead. Yeah. No, he has a lot of, yeah. That's the thing is Stacy gets Killed off screen, and then we see her body. And She's then, like under the fence, right? No, because that, uh, that's uh, the other, the, the nicer all these one. Kids. Margot or whatever. She gets run over, but then she's still alive under the oh, fence. Oh, okay. Stacy goes to help her. Oh, and I think uh, uh, Corey takes a, something to bludgeon her with and he kills her off screen, and then we see her body. And then when he gets to Terry, he's like blow torching him in the foreground, and it's blurry. That's the thing is this movie, except for the DJ's kill, yes. the kills seem toned They're down. They're very toned down compared, compared to, to kills. kills. And kills. even 2018 had a lot of gore in it. Yeah. This movie this is not as gory. And I don't know why. Was that like a Peacock directive since it was going to be released day and date with Peacock? I don't know. No I don't know. Um, but uh the yeah the blowtorch that, freaks me out though because like blowtorch he's like doing it to his mouth it's yeah it's like in his mouth and even though it's in the foreground so it's kind of out of focus i think that makes it freakier honestly. i like it i like the way I it's like done it too. and then he he does the head stomp to margo who again gets like the goriest death even though she was the one who was like i guess the nicest she didn't actually mm-hmm. stop her friends from bullying but she had the conscience about it mm-hmm. so yeah now uh cory's in full-on michael myers kill mode he goes to his home and he murders his mom. Is that right? Yeah, he, we get the, the POV shot, uh, like the Michael Myers POV shot of him going in and taking a knife out of the drawer and he's breathing heavy. Mm-hmm. And then he goes and kills his mom again, I think off screen. Like he goes to stab her and, and then it cuts away. Yeah. Uh, then he Al- heads to the radio station, right? Yeah. And meanwhile, Allison is getting ready to run away with Corey and she tells Lori like she like I love him we're running away together grandmother and you're a crazy old grandma yeah no grandmother that's what she oh, calls her grandmother yeah yeah Corey goes to the radio station he's just beating up ev- or killing everyone who has caused him grievances so DJ Silly Willie's next on the list Silly Willie but first is his front desk uh desk receptionist Darcy Darcy maybe the most innocent of the victims in this I'm Possibly. trying to think yeah because yeah Corey is unlike Michael uh because Michael just kind of kills people mm-hmm. who happen to be there Corey has a, a reason and a plan for yeah. who he's murdering and then there's Darcy who's like just there to work she's just, she's just doing making, her job she's making snow or no ghost the little like ghost paper um, cutouts paper ghosts she's yep. just decorating the radio station for Halloween in her cute little outfit and her little blonde bob it's after hours he <laughs> she's be probably there. not getting a paid overtime <laughs> yeah and then uh yeah no Corey murders her 
Off screen. Off screen, unfortunately. Then he comes and kills Silly Willy, and this is the crazy... <laughs> That's his name now. Chilly he bash, Willy. He bashes Chilly Willy's head into the desk, and that, like, takes off his jaw, and it's his, like, so tongue is sticking good. out, and then Koi grabs a pair of scissors, and without it, with it all on screen, he cuts that tongue right off, mm, and then... It's great. So then the DJ's head falls onto the, the turntable, and I didn't notice this, this until great. you pointed it out the second time we watched it. If you notice, there's, like, a mural, a painting mural in the background inside of the radio dj station. he's like a he's like an ash is he an astronaut he's kind of like um i don't know it almost looks like he's doing extreme sports or something yeah but his like body a, is contorted with his head like at the bottom so his head's on the bottom it's almost like he's like kind of free falling like whoa and the camera like tilts up or down i forget which way but it does it until it lines up with the actual guy's his head dead head is lined the, up the perfectly with painting. the art it looks like they traced it it looks to make great this. It, it's so cool and then in right in front of him the like turntable's still going and his tongue is on it and so every time his tongue goes around it, the record skips over and, and then you even hear it on the radio is skipping. Yeah, Allison's listening to the radio and is like, oh, what the fuck? It turns <laughs> off. So DJ, for sure, Gold coolest death. For Gold sure. Chainsaw. With Easy. all that, like, the gore, the creative shot with the thing, and then the tongue on the, the humor of the it tongue on the record. It would have been so all funny if at the very end he's, like, with all the townspeople, like, no bottom jaw, <laughs> no tongue. He's walking around like, god damn it. <laughs> David Gordon Green can't let us have anything. <laughs> This is when um, we cut back to Lori. This I don't quite understand, even though it's such a great moment. Mm -hmm. I'm just confused as to the like series of events leading up to it and how Lori figures. Lori's plan is a little perfect. Mm -hmm. She what, calls the cops and is like, I'd like to report a suicide at this house. Yeah. And then she gets everything in order she puts her like it's very uh it's haunting the way it's she does sad. it like the, the when we first saw it because we you know i mean the back of my head i'm like there's Laura's no way herself, but it is but. sad she genuinely seems heartbroken over her Allison granddaughter her, and yep. like just kind of silently getting her things in order and yeah it's something. really putting that cardigan on the back of the chair that does it for yeah, me just like yeah. the you know the neatness and like laying her stuff out so she gets out a gun and she even puts it up to her head she does yeah and she's, she's like crying. crying and then and then you see the first person pov shot of like approaching her room breathing heavy it's Corey. he's here to kill her and there's like one shot of a pumpkin before it happens, but then you hear the gunshot and the splatter against the wall. And the first person view opens the door, and Lori's standing there like, "Did you really think I would kill myself?" And it's oh, a great big moment. crowd reaction yeah. is great. But again, yeah, yeah it, it, like, would, how did she, she know, know he, that he was, was watching? there? At that moment, watching her, mm -hmm. maybe she saw him slowly walk up the front steps. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. It's a cool moment. So they get into a fight. I did note that not like two minutes later, she said she has a sentence with the same structure of like, did you really think mm. Allison would like stay with you or whatever? And uh, she like gets him down and then they hear Allison's car coming up. Uh, Cause it's, it's a runner in this movie that her car is like noisily fucked up. So they mm -hmm. recognize, mm -hmm. Oh, here's her car coming up with a it's fucked up muffler or whatever. And this is when he repeats the line of, if I can't have her, no one can he stabs himself in the throat. He stabs himself in the neck and kills himself. And she's like, God damn it. You know, she doesn't want it to end this way. So of course she grabs the knife. Then that's right as Allison, Allison walks in, finds Lori over Corey's body with the knife. I can and he, explain. <laughs> and he had told her earlier, he's like planted the seed for this. He was like, I'm a, I'm afraid of your grandmother. I, she said she wants to kill me. I'm getting scared we should get, get out of town now. And so Allison is like, oh, I guess he was right. Grandmother is, is killing. I genuinely thought the movie was going to end with the reveal that Lori was kind of making up all this stuff in her head and like that like Michael had just infest infected yeah, her that badly and like she's kind of projecting like these murders maybe even didn't happen she's like maybe convincing herself she's doing the same thing everyone else does is she's mm -hmm. like maybe Corey is this villain and projecting all this stuff onto him to the point where it's maybe revealed she's the one who did stab him or yeah. something like that and it's a really depressing ending for that yeah, character. I don't think I I'm glad liked they it. didn't yeah. do it, but I thought it was going to go with even she can't escape the kind of need of this town to like make someone into the Michael of Haddonfield kind of thing. But yeah. I don't know. I thought that's where it was going. 
Allison leaves, and Michael Myers shows up. Michael's here. He's here to kill Lori. But but in 2018, it's not a, it kills. apparently it's not about Lori, but it is. A, that's a thing I don't like about these three movies is God. it can't decide if what it can't decide what Michael is about. For sure, it has no and idea what Michael because because in 2018, there the the big twist was that like. You know, Lori's not Michael's sister like you thought you knew from those other that other continuity, and he doesn't even really care about her. He just happened to wind up at her house at the end because of Dr. Sartain taking him there. Yeah, and so Lori has spent her whole life obsessing over... A guy who doesn't even think about her at all. He doesn't even think <laughs> about her at all, exactly. Yeah, but then in Kills, it's like Michael has stared out his sister's window at Haddonfield. And that's, he's been thinking like, he's been thinking about home this whole time. And he like looks at a reflection of himself and like, and he wants to be home. And then here, why is he going? Oh no, I'm sorry. They do give a reason. He's here for his mask. Oh, that's right. I forgot because Corey has it because he's just running. You're right. Okay. Okay. I apologize for the last five minutes where we were. But it's still like, how do you know that the mask was there? He probably just has been walking real slow this whole time. He just has that tracker. It's like on his uh, little mini map. It's like a red pulsating dot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just knows. He can sense it. I guess. He's got a 3D overlay for a HUD. He's got like predator vision. (laughs) <laughs> just, for, just the mask. for the mask yeah. this little dot <laughs> yeah and when he puts the mask on it actually makes him see normal mm-hmm. instead of predator vision so mm-hmm. it's reverse predator mm-hmm. uh okay so he's there he, he grabs the mask, mask. yeah this nasty nasty mask and that's the big showdown between Lori and michael it's their fight half of which was in the trailers yeah unfortunately it's yeah. a good showdown though it's a good fight i uh, mean she tips the fridge onto him it's good oh uh, yeah that's after stabbing both hands into the table Dude. in like a weird crucifixion and like hammering one of the knives in with, with a, a cast iron <laughs> yeah, yeah with a pan. pan and then yeah tips the fridge on there's a little bit with the the garbage disposal where their hands oh, almost yeah, go in call. it he almost he, sticks a knitting needle in he does hair. he does the he does what she did to him in the original movie when yeah. she stabbed him in the neck with it he stabs her in the neck with a knitting needle mm-hmm. uh yeah she's getting real fucked up he even and then he rips his hand out of the knife to strangle her and he's getting her, but oh, I will say one of my favorite parts of this like sequence is uh, I think one of the ni- the ni- knives. Oh my, I'm tired. One of the knives that Lori's using on him before she fucking stabs him, she like shows it to him like it's a bottle of wine. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And then he's like, "Good, mm-hmm. yes, sir, very good." And then <laughs> yeah, fucking... it stabs him like in the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but this whole time, Allison was starting to leave town. And then she saw the radio station on burning, fire. and then she heard a police report, or Frank called her and was like, Lori called in a suicide. Right. So I guess she was like, oh, Lori called in uh, Corey's suicide, and that radio station's on fire. I think Corey might have done that. Maybe grandmother was right. Yeah. So she goes back home right in time to stop Michael from strangling Lori to death. And we get the Strode women fighting him together again, uh, which we always love to see. Oh, yeah, Allison just snaps his arm in half. She does. She breaks that thing over the edge of the the table he's pinned into. And then they just start slitting all his – they slit his wrists real slow. Real slow, just slicing his wrists open. It's gross. And then while Lori's, like, holding Michael's bleeding hand, then she slits his throat real slow. Mm -hmm. And Michael Myers – is dead. Is dead. And then the cops show up. It takes them for fucking ever, dude. Yeah. Where have they been? And so then uh, they got to make sure that he's dead. They got to make sure. Sh- this is Halloween ends. We got to make sure that evil dies tonight. Yeah, I'm shocked they didn't say it. Not even once. I There was a, a, a detail I loved on. There was some graffiti. Oh, yeah. Near the beginning, that's Love Lives Today. Which is how that whole thing got started. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, because the... It's like a little yes. uh, donation box, Love Lives Today. But yeah, that's you can see it. And evil dies tonight. The, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway. So they're like, the uh, get, the sheriff, sheriff shows up. Sheriff Barker shows up. Where the fuck have you been these past two movies? Man, in 2018, Sheriff Barker's there. And he's not in it a lot. He's in it a little and bit. And we're like, that's two okay. Us dumbasses we are got, like, he'll be back. He'll be in We got two more movies. Two. That sheriff's going to be plenty because he looks so fucking cool with his cowboy hat. 
each movie he's in it less and less. And in this one, just a little bit at the end. It's a crime that people need to answer for. What are you doing? Yeah. I know. Where's so he been? shows up and they're fucking tying Michael's corpse to the roof of the car. And yep, one of the dude. cops is like, this isn't how we do it. And the sheriff's like, it is tonight. It is tonight. And, and then Michael line. gets a fucking queen's funeral. They have a whole like. They drive his body through town. Police escort All for these cars body, following in a procession. Tied to the roof of their car like a Christmas tree. And they, yeah. And they <laughs> drive it to that junkyard. To this like mulcher thing that they had shown in a few and shots then, prior. And like, then all the town's showing up. Everyone's oh, yeah. walking up. Sandra little, in her wheelchair. Sandra, the little kid. The the, the kid who the had the best movie. babysitter, his favorite babysitter World, yeah, ever. Yeah, my most favorite babysitter. Yeah, He's he there. shows up. Uh, uh, I forget who else is showing. It's just the whole town's there, and they all pass Michael's body. They like basically Spider-Man. body surf him over to yeah. the fucking grinder, and Allison turns it on, and Lori. Pushes his body into this fucking grinder, it's and you watch it fold, and then his head just... fold in half the wrong way, <laughs> yeah. and then his head just kind of pops. So it's fun. It's it's great. I love like, I love it. I yeah. love this definitive end to Michael. Yeah, Myers. that we know you. We know we have to make sure that he is dead, dead, and we have to show you the audience this. So what's the most definitive way we can show you this on Haddonfield's budget? If we had, if if Haddonfield was like. A country, they'd be sending him to space. They'd be sending his body parts to space or like the bottom <laughs> of the ocean or something. But you know, this is the best this little town can do is just send him to the junkyard. Yeah. So like, this is it for this continuity. This is it. I'm sure they'll do something else with Halloween I'm sure they will. in four years. Yeah. And but... then the next morning, the new there's like news on the background, and Lori's finally a hero on the news. Yeah, there's which is some. nice. That's nice. And Allison finally decides to leave Haddonfield. She's stuck around this whole time, despite all the trauma. And uh, Lori and um, Frank Frank are gonna go to Japan. Yep. To see the cherry, cherry blossoms. blossoms. I, you know what, I feel so teased with the fact that we could have gone to Japan in this movie. <laughs> we could have had Michael chasing Lori in Japan. And it would have been stupid, but I would have loved it. Oh, also the Michael mask is on the is in Lori's house. It's like yeah, on I the guess table. she kept it. Yeah. So Halloween, Halloween ends. ends. What a weird. It's just bizarre. Fucking movie, man. Mm-hmm. I had more fun watching Halloween Kills. Halloween Kills is more fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's just this one just feels so dour compared to that one it's it's so much moodiness all the scenes with Corey and allison like Corey is just a moody character yeah. and again actor does a great job really sells the whole transition yeah it's not a hip problem char- it's, it's not a, just a like i don't want to watch Corey for this long yeah i don't want to watch that character for that long i don't, I don't know he reminds me of darren chris oh yeah i think they look similar i don't know maybe i'm just face blind to like kind of dark curly-ish hair and the glasses yeah i don't know man that's I still it. don't know we've been talking about this for more than an hour and i'm still like I don't know. That, it, like i guess if i had to sum it up it'd be disappointment because like it's not the worst movie like again it's competently made david gordon green is a good director he's great at casting the actors are awesome the little like Halloween music that he always finds is so fun. It feels a little bit like third movie panic, maybe. <sighs> I don't know. Yeah, it's weird, man. Yeah. And I, don't I just know. I just wish that this trilogy, this whole trilogy, was great. Yeah. I wish that we had a solid Halloween trilogy and we don't. Uh yeah. I he's doing the exorcist next. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that goes well. We'll see about that. Is that going to be movies? It is. Interesting. Is that is it going to be continuity from? I think it's a, a direct sequel to the first one. So they're doing that again. Okay. And then I think it's multiple movies planned again, which like. Mm, maybe they have more of a roadmap this Hopefully. time. Hopefully. It's just weird because his tone fit fine for Halloween 2018. That's the thing is the Exorcist feels so New England to me. Is that where it takes place? I don't know. I forget. Because I haven't covered it, so I haven't done like where a deep it took, dive. But it yeah. feels a bit, I, I don't know. Maybe I just, I, I I like the kind of like small. Well, I feel like you can get away with levity more in Halloween. That too. Exorcist. Are we going to want a Big John, Little John type character in Exorcist? <laughs> like that's, I don't know, dude. 
big priest little priest <laughs> yeah yeah boy all, all right. right that's halloween ends dude i don't know i know that a lot of people wanted to like can't us wait to, for dead meat to fucking drag halloween ends and i'm us sorry to, like to maybe come to its defense and i don't think we provided either we things. probably disappointed everyone <laughs> disappointed everyone with this episode thank you for watching <laughs> please, uh, please still like us keep watching just sometimes we don't know man and that's fine. Sometimes we got to talk about our feelings and <laughs> still come away just as confused as we were at the start. Yeah. But. All right. Maybe next week we'll have something more definitive to talk about. We'll see. Yeah. This comes out on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple days. So Black Friday Kill Count comes out on Friday. Nice. Uh, then Bodies, Bodies, Bodies the week after. And then uh, we had. I know that I gave a schedule and I really want to keep it. There was some issues that you can read be between the lines and figure out for yourself, but uh, nope. And last night in Soho sadly have to be postponed for the time being. Don't worry. We got some good ones to replace it. We got malignant and we got prey great movies. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, well, it's fine. Now, if you haven't seen it yet, check out the Pre -game. opening of our, our, our opening, our proof of concept for the opening of a movie we're producing called pregame. I will link to it in the description. Yeah. We but. act in it. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves Chelsea's acting. It's real good. It's got dope dope music. Yeah. Oh, my God. The music is so good. The music's great. It looks great. It looks I'm great. I'm very happy with it for the very, very tiny budget. And, and time that we like had. Like three weeks or something crazy to yeah. make that happen. Yeah. It's. I'm very proud of it. So please check that out. Share it with your friends and family. Uh, and check out Dead Me on social media at Dead Me James on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. Tw Twitter is still up somehow. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Yeah. I'm at Carebeck, C R E B E C C on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, DeadMeatStore.com. We're going to be at uh, Season, Season Screamings. Screamings, December 2nd. Through fourth? Oh god, we should have had that information. I think it's December. It's it's the first weekend of December. It's the first I'm pretty sure December, it's two, three, and four. And we're doing a screening, screening of a secret. Uh, the movie we have it has not been revealed yet. We know what it is, but you don't. I, I think the wording that they have is it stars a star of one of this year's most talked about horror films. Okay. And it is a holiday horror film. Yes. So. Uh, okay. Yeah. You can probably figure that out, and we'll be doing a, a secret. We'll be hosting that screening and mm -hmm. talking to the director um, there. So come check that out and come meet us at Season Screamings. Yeah. It'll be fun. Conventions, Excellent. baby. All right. Uh, thanks, as always, to Gressel for being our TD. Love yeah. you, buddy. Doing this on a Sunday night. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, yeah, until next time, I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. <laughs>